John Gwynn's Malice, the first book in the Faithful and the Fallen series, is one hell of a debut. In an interview with Orbert, Gwynn said that he wrote this book purely for his entertainment and joy. And for me, that rings so true. Because if I were to ever write an epic fantasy novel, I would pack it with every single trope that I absolutely love. Welcome people, today we are chatting Malice by John Gwynn and I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of the story. We're going to have a look at some of the magic and the world building so that you can gauge if this is a story that would interest you and if you would like to check it out as well. I'm then going to give you my spoiler free thoughts on the story as a whole because while this is awesome, there are a couple of problems with it as well. So what's it all about? The story takes place in the Banished Lands, which has just such a lovely history filled with blood and murder. The Banished Lands have a very violent past where men and giants clashed in warfare over the ages. Although the giant clans are broken, their fortresses litter the land and are now populated by men who do what they do best and take over things. But now the giants make moves again and the stones themselves are weeping blood while giant worms are starting to appear again. Those that can see the signs see a threat that is far greater than any of those ancient wars. We find ourselves following six different POVs who are preparing for the God War, a prophesized war where the gods are going to return and their avatars are going to do battle for the fate of the world. Sounds good to me. There are six POVs in Malice and three of them we spend the bulk of our time with and all of them are awesome. Following a range of interweaving themes from betrayal to found family to ancient weapons, magical items, loyalty, good versus evil and a coming of age story. Now I know what you're thinking. A couple of tropes in there. If you search for the top 10 epic fantasy tropes, you are going to find every single one of them inside this book, plus a couple more. Now, I know that this sounds like a criticism, but let me tell you, it is far from it. I loved every second of this book. The tropes for a reason. They've been done countless times because they work. People love them. The trouble is, is that they can get tiring and people are always looking for a, a new take or a twist on them. Malice is the classic good versus evil. There is a good God that created the place. There is an evil one that wanted to destroy it. There is a chosen one. There is a prophecy. There is the blacksmith's farm boy's son. There's the crippled mentor with a secret. There's an old lady near the woods that heals people and everyone thinks is a witch. It's got animal companions and I am all in for that. I'm telling you, it is trope filled. But in saying that, there was something so refreshing about Malice. Yeah, it came out in 2012 and maybe it's because for the past few years, I've been trying to avoid a lot of those tropes and try different things. So when I found myself falling back into them, it just took me to all the things that I love about epic fantasy. Does it make the story a little bit predictable? Yeah, like a little bit, but that doesn't change the fact that we still love to follow the story of these characters and go on the journey with them with people that we become so attached to. And even though at times you do see where things are going, John does a really good job of adding his own flavor, his own twists, and making you question the things that you were so sure were gonna happen. There are things in this book that when it comes to high fantasy, you just expect, but John Gwynn does such a great job of doing them justice, if not even better. He also does an excellent job of writing action. You can really tell that he's perfected it over the years. I came here after reading the Bloodsworn Saga, and despite this being his debut novel, you can really see the beginnings of something awesome. Yeah, the story is filled with those tropes, but it is still bloody and violent. The story does not pull punches at all. The battles and the fights themselves are very, very detailed, and you spend a lot of time in them without it becoming too much. You're able to build the movie of the battle itself in your head without it being over descripted and still leaving room for you to create that movie with your own flavor. Now the magic itself sits on a softer end. The gods have left behind traces of magic. There are fantastical elements that do come through in the creatures and the monsters or the giant race. But outside of that, the magic system kind of sits closer towards Tolkien than it does to Sanderson. People sometimes say cryptic words and magical things happen, or there are ancient books that people read from and different things happen. There are magical items mentioned and some are more present than others, but most of the time it's kept quite in the background. I don't know if it's gonna continue that way or if they'll become more integral to the story as it develops, but for the most part, the magic system itself definitely isn't at the forefront of the storytelling. Now, while the magic system is quite soft, the world building is very hard. It is good epic fantasy, and John Gwynn has crafted the Banished Lands in a way that feels really real. It has a real history that influences the present day. There are different races and different tribes that have 
past filled with political intrigue and tension. It does have some kingdoms and some tribes that have their own unique characteristics, but for the most part, most of the human races, they're quite interchangeable. Now, I'm not saying that that's a flaw, it's just not on the level of like the Robert Jordans of the world. For the most part, the people are just interchangeable and most of the humans are just humans. You could essentially pick up these kingdoms and these castles and kind of move them anywhere, barring maybe a couple of them and you wouldn't really notice the difference. Now, like I said, it's not a criticism, it's just a comment on what the world building is. But for the most part, it's got everything you need. It feels like a real world with real people in it that have real lives and a real history that impacts today's age. And John Gwynn does a great job of getting you to become attached to these places because of how much you care about the characters. Because this, outside of the bloody action, is the absolute strength of what Malice is. All the characters are great, especially the POVs. Now, Gwyn uses some very typical strategies of getting you to care about these characters. And from time to time, it is a little bit on the nose, but it works. For some of the antagonists, it is very much a bit of a, that's a bad dude, you shouldn't like him. And that's a good dude, like him instead. Again, nitpicking. It fades into the background because of the little relationships that our main characters and our main POVs have with their tight circle. Over the story, you become very attached to them and you do care about every single one of the central characters in this story. And when things start to kick off toward the end, it makes it so powerful. But there were a couple of things that I didn't necessarily like when I was reading Malice. And it could have just been me and my tiny little brain, but throughout the first half of the book, maybe a little bit less than that, I was constantly checking the names of people and places because you're bombarded by such an array of names and different things that are all linked in different ways. And it might have just been me, but the six POVs, they all have a cast of characters around them. And while they're all separated geographically, they all still hold these links and kind of cross paths at different points in the story. And at times I really, really struggled to keep track of what was going on and who was who. But it does click eventually and you are left with an array of characters that you do genuinely start to care about. And it is a little bit slow during the start. It does take its time establishing these characters but I think it's necessary because I do not believe that the end would be as powerful. It is so action heavy and fast paced towards the end that without that slow setup, I don't think the end is as powerful as it is. Outside of that, I absolutely enjoyed Malice so, so much. Yes, it's tropey. It is filled with tropes. This story has been written 100,000 times before, but the way that John Gwynn handles it makes it so refreshing. He adds his own flavor, he adds his twists, and it just makes for such a great read. I haven't read the following books yet, but I 100% will be doing so, and very, very soon. I feel so safe recommending this series. I cannot see Gwyn messing this one up from here. I am so pumped to read the rest of them. Definitely check out Malice by John Gwyn. If you haven't already, it is absolutely worth your time. Otherwise, happy reading, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.